Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to another video. Now I'd firstly want to apologize for no video last week. Uh, this was due to a very busy uh, week at university and I simply uh, hadn't have enough time to make a video. So um, I just received the brushless motor for the uh, windmill and let's Unpackage it and let's compare it to the DIY version, which uh, I'm not going to use. This is a, uh, a AliExpress motor. It's a brushless DC motor or PLDC. Let's check. Now it's not exactly a, um, a precise fit. And that is because, ooh, as you can see right here, uh, these are closer to each other than these are. And, and the distance between those two is the correct size. I think that's 24 millimeters. And we need 24. And I think this is 20 millimeters. So uh, I need to make an adapter uh, in order to compensate for that. And still be able to fit it on the um, the windmill but it feels okay it, uh, it feels uh, really well actually let's check what happens if we short them together does it feel no well it's uh, 30 20 1200 kV um, motor So it's a cheap one. I think it cost me around 14 euros or something. So I'm going to grab my um, oscilloscope and check what the uh, the peak output is of this thing, because I'm really curious uh, to see what the performance is like. So right now I just hooked it up to my oscilloscope uh, using. Um, a probe per face. Uh, I did not connect the ground, so let's spin it. And that's really good. And let's check the peak to peak voltage of channel 2, which is. Yeah, the red wire. No, it is not. It's the middle wire. Uh, okay. Now I'm not sure what this is. I think this is uh, electrical noise. But I think it's clipping. Five. Around 17 volts peak to peak, which is perfect actually. So let me grab my. Um, uh, my little board that I created to convert it to DC and check what that outputs. Now I do have a little challenge to tackle. These connectors are obviously not going to fit inside the terminal block so I need to um, create a workaround for that. I'm afraid the best solution here is to um, actually cut them and uh, strip them and solder a hard uh, and on it and of course hope that it fits in the terminal connection which, which I think it does I think it should do we're going to need high temperatures for this because it's quite some uh, some copper I think and I do um, maybe I'm going to add a bit of wire to them to extend the uh, the leads because they are rather short. I think that two uh, wires per uh, one wire should work. You know this is all about efficiency because uh, it's going to be used inside a uh, windmill so you want that as efficient as possible. Now, I don't have matching, uh, matching colors but 
Okay. A wire is a wire, right? No matter the color. By the way, I'm also planning to do an upgrade on the, uh, the Gardena um, Home Assistant controlled uh, with Google Calendar uh, sprinkling computer or oh, a watering system computer thing. Uh, I'm planning to uh, make a uh, case for it that includes a solar panel. Well, that includes that allows uh, mounting a solar panel to it instead of using a um, I think it, I'm using a 9 volt wall adapter right now but the problem with that is that there's always a wire coming from the, the device so there's always a wire going outside underneath the door and yeah it, it isn't the most charming uh, sight so I, uh, I'll keep you updated on that but first I'm going to finish this uh, windmill project which is going to take uh, some time, but it has already taken uh, quite a lot of time and energy and plastic and money. So I'm in the phase now of uh, fitting all the components and determining what I need and what I don't need anymore because the electronics are very different of the, uh, the website that I uh, downloaded the design from and the, the thing I'm going to use or make because the website uh, uh, used the Hall Effect sensor and all that uh, things uh, and there are LEDs inside the, the wings and I don't have and want that uh, I need the temperature sensor maybe a light sensor so you know, things to be done um, I could use one of these two, one of these thick wires. I don't want to solder it directly onto the connector, since the connector is, uh, you know, like the banana plug style. And if I saw, ah, oh, shit. If I solder direct directly on the connector, it doesn't um, uh, move anymore, and it's uh, permanently uh, yeah, it's it's big. It's permanently stuck in the big position. So I've heated up my soldering iron. Let's turn on the fan and let's. Grab this since we'll need it. Let's firstly pre thin all the wires that we'll be using. So those two, those two, and all right. I think this should go pretty quick since that's 480. Nice. So it's cutting time for these. I do like to cut it in such a way that I can reuse the connectors if I uh, might need it. So I think this is okay. My uh, wire stripper doesn't uh, cut the job. Nice uh, pump made there. Maybe if I adjust the tension. So, those are properly exposed. No. I think they just uh, use the enameled copper wire, which is, um, yeah, that's the problem. Because the solar won't stuck to it. 
I need to get the enamel of the thing. So we use a blowtorch then. Uh, open some windows first. I'm hoping that we can burn it away. Let's check what's, uh, what's happening right now. If we try to solder something to it, now yeah, it does smell really good. Not. And I also think it kind of worked. Cause that's not hot anymore. Let's try to solder or something to it. Well, it's partially working. Maybe I need a bigger soldering iron for this job, so let me get one. Because I do have a 60 watt soldering iron. And I think that's a more suitable application for this uh, problem. Now my main soldering iron is only 20 watts, and this one is 60. Or uh, 23, but it's rated at 60 watt uh, output power or something it's very powerful and I think it's also because of the uh, thermal mass because there's a, a heating element in there and the, the whole thing that heats up is rather big so it takes a short while to heat up now this was one of the first soldering irons I got and this was one of the first soldering iron that stopped working because of me not knowing how to solder properly so I managed to uh, survive the tip but most of the tip has been eaten away by me not knowing how to uh, keep your soldering tip clean there you go it's now starting to uh, get up to temperature now I don't know how, uh, how hot it's going to be it just says 20, 23 watts at 230 volts. But I do know that it's, uh, yeah, it's quite powerful. I think it's up to temperature. doesn't really allow me to solder anything to it so I'm afraid that the enamel isn't completely gone 
and that's still there on some places. So I think we might need to uh, hit it with the blowtorch again. Now my mat's capable of um, withstanding around four to five hundred degrees, but that blowtorch was not four to five hundred degrees. It was a little bit, a little bit higher, I think. But let's try to solder it onto it right now, since I think it's still hot. also hot. Alright, they're on. And uh, let's check again with the scope if they're all making good contact. a little bit better. No, that's good. All right. So now we should be able to connect it to the converter board. Oh, I think we should add some uh, heat shrink. Uh, So the uh, moment of truth just fits in there quite nice and snug. Tighten it down. Tighten it 
these two now I don't see anything lined up yet but let's attach the, uh, the scope to it to check if that's the case or not If I remember correctly, yeah, this was the positive. And this is the negative. Oh. Oh, let's uh, grab this rail again and try it that way. But I don't think there's anything happening. And we put it onto a different coupling mode. says that there's something happening which is correct but not the right thing is happening Doo -doo -doo. So, ground. No. Alright, there's input signal. Maybe I switched the ground and the plus. That's possible, but Hmm, it's very strange that there isn't anything coming out of the, the device.
just not nothing. Uh, it shows nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's not what I had hoped for. So, if you know um, what's this about, why it doesn't uh, do anything, please uh, let me know. Let me know down below. And I'll try to improve the circuitry, because uh, this isn't working. As expected. Which is a bit of a, a bummer, because I was expecting it to work as expected. But hey, you can't have everything, I guess. So, uh, thanks for watching this short video. Uh, and I think I'll be back um, very soon with another video uh, regarding the windmill. So. Bye. Hey guys, quick update on the generator. I did some uh, experiments and I came to the conclusion that I needed a Dremel in order to make the LED of the generator light up. As you can see right here and plug it in. Now the minimum speed of the Dremel is 10,000 RPM and the maximum speed is uh, 33,000. So Can see it lights up. And if I uh, do it a little bit quicker, it doesn't really light up more. But yeah, and at full speed. So that's a bit of uh, a shame because uh, yeah, the wind isn't going to spin the windmill at 33,000 RPM and I think a gearbox is uh, not sufficient to do that job. So if you take a look at the, um, the oscilloscope, at the output of the bridge rectifier at full speed. It's around um, 3 volts, so that is by far not enough to, uh, to power something. Let's take a look at the output of the regulator. It's full speed. I think that's the input. I think this is the output. Yeah, this is the output. Okay, the output stays fairly consistent um, at the higher speeds, which is of course what we need. The motor gets a little warm, 
but that's okay. But yeah, the, I, I need to do something to make it uh, have a lot more resistant resistance. Because this isn't uh, capable of generating energy at all. So I'll keep you updated on that one. See ya, bye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.